Hey guys, this is Todd. I just wanted to show you. I just finished week four of my coding boot camp, which uh, it's a 12 week course, a three month course. So um, I'm a third of the way done. And I just wanted to show you really quickly um, what that looked like. Week one, we set up uh, GitHub. Uh, well, if you, we hadn't, if anyone hadn't set up GitHub already, um, which they should, but we went over GitHub and we went over Git commands. Um, and we went over the Python pre-work problem solutions. Uh, there were five Python um, algo questions that they had us do uh, before we had to turn in before we were supposed to turn in before the startup bootcamp. A lot of people didn't, I guess. Day two, we went over CSS selectors, Flexbox. Um, we touched on HTML a little bit here, of course, but we never really hit html exclusively we just kind of sprinkled it in uh throughout the lessons it uh, there was a, a pre-work curriculum uh a pre boot camp pre-start date curriculum we were supposed to complete um, that included a lot of html and css uh, fundamental knowledge and so uh, i think it was kind of assumed that you already knew the basics of html and css here um, but again, I, I don't think that was enforced. And I think a lot of people started bootcamp without doing the pre-work problems, you know, without, um, doing the, uh, fundamental, the um, curriculum. So anyway, uh, and then the homework on day two was to build a copy website from a picture. They gave us a picture. I think it was, uh, of a theater website and we had to, uh, recreate it with CSS, HTML, Flexbox. Day three, we went over Grid and Bootstrap. Uh, this is the first time I had used Bootstrap, which was cool. I really enjoyed that. Uh, the homework that day was to build an Amazon login page, non-functional, of course, uh, just the surface level um, from a picture that they gave us, a mock-up. Um, and then day four, uh, the instructor just showed us how step-by-step step, how to build that Amazon login from the previous day's homework. And then the group project for over the weekend due on Monday, uh, was we split into uh, four person teams and each person was assigned one page of a website. So it was like a landing page, which was, uh, what I did. There was a, a login page, there was a sign up page, and then there was a, how it works page. And so we were each responsible for creating one page and collaborating, uh, putting that website together uh, via GitHub. So that was fun. That was week one of the boot camp. Uh, da, 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 da. Week two looked like this. Uh, we went over, let's see. Uh, no, and we want to go back first. Yeah, here we go. Week two, we went over Python variables. Uh, types, lists, and loops. Uh, the homework was three Python algo questions. Uh, day two, so obviously this is the Python week, right? First one was HTML, CSS. Week two, started getting into Python more. Python functions on day two, scoping, uh, data collections, like list comp and, um, and then list comprehensions, uh, which I really love. Homework that day was uh, two Python problems uh, where we had to create functions. Day three, Python data collections two, uh, which included dictionaries, sets, uh, importing, exporting modules. Homework that day was creating a shopping cart with lists or dictionaries with functionality to add and remove items, etc. Uh, create a module in VS Code and import it into Jupyter Notebook. Uh, a lot of the times the, the instructor will be using a Jupyter Notebook uh, to teach class, which if you're not familiar with it, it's almost like um, taking a, a Python file and like a, a word, uh, word file and squishing them together, uh, so that you can have, um, instructions, blah, 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 instructions. And then right below the instructions, there's a box where you can code in and you can execute that code, just that box of code. And then you can put more instructions below that. And then another box of code to execute, you know, and instructions on what, how to, ex you know, what to execute in that box. And uh, all the boxes are linked. It's still all one Python file. So you, you, in the very first box, if you import uh, a module, then you'll have that. You know, if you name a variable and instanti instantiate a class uh, or something, then that will be available all through the, the other boxes as well. Uh, so anyway, that was um, the, the Jupyter Notebook. It was 
That's why I mentioned that there. Day four, uh, we went over Python classes, uh, creating and instantiating a class, class attributes and methods, and inheritance. Our homework that day was to turn our previous shopping cart um, program into an object-oriented program using a class. So make the shopping cart a shopping cart class. Um, and then instantiate it and turn all the helper functions into methods on that class. Uh, and then another part of the homework was to create a class with two methods, uh, one to get a string and one to print a string. And then the pair programming project uh, for week two over the weekend was to create a parking garage class that tracks um, tickets and spaces uh, using lists and dictionaries and has functionality to let users take tickets, pay the tickets, leave the garage, etc. cetera. Uh, that was pretty cool. And that was it for uh, week two. Let's see. Week three was, uh, here we go, uh, importing regular, oh, importing. We went over importing some more. Regular expressions, regex. Uh, sets, we went over some more, opening and reading a file in Python, you know, using Python to reach out and grab a file, open it, uh, and read the contents of that file. The homework that day was to use Python to access data from another file and use regex to match valid names from that file. Day two was uh, Lambda functions, uh, the map filter and reduce methods. We went, we, went, we went over recursion, uh, generators, which was the first time I'd been exposed to that idea, which was super cool. Uh, homework was four problems. Uh, one, to filter out all empty strings and spaces from a list. Uh, one, to write an anonymous function that sorts arrays of names by last name. Uh, and then one, to use a map function with a lambda to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit in a list of tuples. And then lastly, to write a recursive function to perform Fibonacci sequence up to an nth number. So that was super cool, too. I really enjoyed all of those. Day three, we went over in-place algorithms versus out-of-place algorithms, uh, two-pointers, uh, that method, uh, bubble sort, insertion sort, merge sort, uh, binary search. The homework was to reverse a list in place using an in-place algorithm and reverse the string elements at the same time. Um, let's see, and then, uh, we, then to create a function that counts the occurrences of each word in a string and returns a dictionary of all the words and how many times they occurred, write a program that imp uh, to implement a linear search algorithm, write the time complexity of the algorithm. Oh, that's kind of funny. <laughs> uh, day four, time and space complexity. Uh, we went over that more. We just barely touched on it. That's why he was asking us to uh, up, he included it in the instructions for the homework. Then the next day, we really hit time and space complexity uh, for day four. Um, arrays, stacks, queues, linked lists, binary search tree. And then the solo project for that weekend, for the, what is that, week three weekend, was... Um, to create an object-oriented program for an automated rental property ROI calculator based on the Foursquare method of calculating property ROI. Um, yeah, so that was that for that for that week. That was week three, and then um, I just finished week four. Uh, day one this week was Postgres, QL, uh, SQL queries, operators, and aggregators. The homework was 10 sets of data to be retrieved from a database using SQL. Um, day two was creating a database using um, entity relational diagrams, ERDs, and cardinality, uh, using DDL statements and inserting into databases using DML statements. The homework uh, was to uh, using Lucidchart and PostgreSQL create an ERD and database for a movie theater with at least customer, ticket, concession, and movie tables, and then insert data into that, um, into that, uh, into those tables. Day three was SQL joins, subqueries, and multi joins. The homework for day three was eight questions requiring the use of SQL joins and subqueries to answer from a database. And then day four was um, SQL stored functions and procedures. And then we also threw in, because it was a short day and we were missing a day next week, 
um, because of MLK Day, we threw in intro to APIs. So the homework was uh, using uh, a Pokemon API, retrieve and store the name, ability, uh, base experience, and picture URL for five different Pokemon. And uh, then there's also, um, darn it, I, I forgot to uh, add it, but there's, uh, oh, here we go. Yeah, and then so that was the homework for day four. And then the class and solo project for the weekend is as a class, we were given this set of requirements and we had to design an ERD for a car dealership. Um, so the tables were like salesman, customer, invoice, um, car, um, service ticket, mechanic. And then, you know, so we had to figure out how to connect which databases, which tables we would need in our database, um, what the relationships were, which attributes we would need. And then we had to do that as a class. And then using the class ERD, we have to individually create uh, the database and uh, insert data into it. I haven't done that yet, but that's where I am after one third of the boot camp, and uh, it's fun. I love it, having a great time. So um, yeah, uh, I would highly recommend a full stack software engineering immersive. Uh, that's how I'm going to put the boot camp on my resume, probably. I'm sure. Uh, all right, so that's it. I uh, hope this helps. If you're looking into a boot camp, um, I'm, I'm going to continue sharing my. Uh, uh, my journey and uh, what it's like, different um, things that I wished uh, I had been able to uh, see and know uh, when I was researching boot camps and before I started, I, you know, something like this, um, I couldn't, I could never find like what they were actually doing every day, what, what, what I could expect, what kind of homework I could expect, what kind of projects I could expect. Um, so for at least for a 12 week coding boot camp, this is, uh, probably something similar to what you'll you'll be going through. So hopefully that helps and is a good resource for somebody to make a decision on what to do, where to go. I highly recommend getting um, as much coding experience you can before you start a boot camp. Um, the, the, the more fundamental knowledge you have, the more experience you have coding before going into boot camp, the more of this information you're going to retain, the more you'll understand. Um, and you know, the more valuable I think it will be for you. So get the most bang for your buck. All right. That's it. Talk to you later. Bye.